podcast hosting provided by Transistor. If you want to host your own show, head over to Transistor.fm and start a 14-day free trial. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Regen Racing Podcast. I'm your host Dino, here once again with my offsider, Nath. How are you doing, Nath? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me again. No problem. You're uh, pretty much the only one that decides to actually come on the podcast so far. <laughs> Although in saying that, I do have a special guest uh, lined up for next week. Oh, Yeah, I'm looking forward to it actually, our first guest. Uh, I will let you all know more later in the show. Nice. So, Nath, media of the week. We'll start with that, as always. Yes, so my media of the week is um, the new season, or the latest season of Taskmaster. Oh, is it a goodie? It is a goodie, it is a goodie, yes. Um, you know, the very you know same format as as previous seasons but uh but once again just excellent tv viewing it's quality isn't it oh, really it is. some of the some of the tasks are just so out there but some of them are so mind bending that if you really think about it you can win the challenge quite easily it, it's yeah yeah uh, I always find when I'm watching it, I'm constantly thinking, how would I have done this, or how would I do this, or how could I get around this, yeah. or, yeah. Me too. It's, um, it's great. I love it. I love it. And how many seasons has there been? Uh, I think uh, this is season seven. Season seven, wow. Been, you know, five episodes a season, and now I think they've expanded it to seven? And are the, are the tasks seven, right? all pretty fresh still? thinking have they have they reused any similar themes similar themes um if you haven't watched it highly recommend it yeah i can second that it's it's a great watch and if you've got nothing to do on a saturday night and you feel like some comedy um because is alex a comedian because obviously greg davies is yes yeah i think he, yeah, he's definitely a comedian quirky comedian and my one for media of the week is several stories high which is a podcast by Nathaniel David Knox. And he is kind of a an interesting... He creates his own stories for the podcast. And they're a bit out there. They're a bit wacky. But um, I really recommend that. So um, he's a bit alternative. And some of the humor on the podcast is quite dry. But if you're into that, yeah, give it a, give it a, go, give it a go. Nice. Yeah. Is it all... Is each episode a different story? Or is there kind of an overarching? Some of them have part one and part two, but they are all pretty much separate stories, yeah. Nice. I'll check it out. Now, into Formula E news. More Formula E news than you can shake a stick at. So, Alexander Albin will join Sebastian Buemi at Nissan for season five. What a signing this is going to be. So, if you don't know, Alexander Albin is currently second in the championship for Formula 2. And he is ahead of Lando Norris, who has a Formula One drive with McLaren next year already set up. So, I mean, this guy's quality and Sebastian Buemi, season two champion, I think it's it's really going to be one of those strong lineups that we'll see near the top. I think they'll be pushing, um, obviously, Nissan, the only Japanese manufacturer. So E-Racing 365 uh, revealed in June, back in June, that Alexander Albin was uh, being considered for this. So they were on the case, obviously, and knew something was up. But, um, yeah, I think the pairing, Sebastian Buemi, his impressive record, and Alexander Albin, uh, he's just a really skilled driver. This is this is going to be a team that's near the top. What are your thoughts, Nath? Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, Nissan, new team coming in, but they've got a big history in electric cars. Um, you know, they're probably one of the, at least where we are here in New Zealand, the the largest supplier, manufacturer of electric cars. Um, so they're, they're quite a big contender in that market. So I think that's really going to um, transfer across for them in, the, in Formula E next season. 
You know, they're missing lives everywhere, isn't it? You oh, can't everywhere. You can't not say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's be you know, it's probably Nissan Leaf, Prius, and then the occasional Tesla is about all we we've got over here, isn't it? You don't see much more. Uh, the BMW i3 is around. True, true. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Um, apart from those, not really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, you know, we're not we're not going to see Tesla and Formula E for a while, by the sounds of it. But um, Nissan and BMW, it will be interesting to see how they perform. Also, we see Jaguar has revealed its Gen 2 car. I, Nath, I, I thoughts on this one. I love it. The teams are really stepping it up on the livery game this season. It's just incredible. Oh, yeah. Look, Jaguar's Gen 2 car looks straight out of Tron. It is, it is fantastic looking. Basically, um, it's got the colours as well. It's, it's got the colours. It's got the lines. Um, it, what I find quite interesting in this, this photo I'm looking at here is... Um, just the a couple of people standing next to the Jaguar car, and you really get an appreciation for just how low and how slick these new Gen 2 cars are. They are. They really are. I love it. I think it's great. I think... Um, I, c- I can't wait. I think it's probably in my top two, to be honest, so far. Virgin confirms it'll become an Audi customer for Season 5. Yeah. This is, uh, well... It's news, but it's not really news to me or anyone else that actually follows Formula E. So mm. if you've listened to this podcast for a wee while, you're probably aware that this was the worst kept news in the paddock, <laughs> uh, with DS being confirmed at Cheetah. Virgin has finally confirmed it, and it um, was really revealed in, back in January, so this has been around a while. Audi is going to be an incredible force this season, and... Sam Bird with the car behind him. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Yeah, if I had to predict some early, um, some early contenders now, Sam Bird and one of those Audis. Ooh. Yeah. So Sam Bird, he's been with the team Virgin Racing for five seasons. Um, he's got an Audi powertrain, so he's got the team behind him. He's got, you know, hopefully, what we hope will be an incredibly quick car, like season four. Uh, behind him it's going to be a pretty good match and yeah. I'd, I'd like to see him win quite a few races have we got a co-driver confirmed or a second the second driver at virgin confirmed yet no but it does look like robin frains is the favorite right. he has done a f- I'm, I'm i've seen his name around so he has done some racing for formula e before i'm not sure what team but he has been before so he is looking like the best candidate at the moment to replace Alex Lynn. Excellent. And some news coming out of Venturi as well. Um, Venturi uh, backing female racing talent. Um, so Susie Wolf, who's their new uh, team principal, um, is wanting to point a young female driver to Venturi in the near future. Yeah, so this story, quite cool actually. So there are quite a few female racers that quite high profile. Um, not quite as high profile as the men, but they are quick and experienced drivers. Um, the one that comes to mind for me is, I'm going to probably butcher this, Tatiana Calderon, who's the development driver for, who is she the development driver? She's the development driver for Sauber Formula One team. This is an interesting story. So the day after the opening race in Riyadh, there is a test and the teams have been incentivized to have a female driver for their second car to be able to have two cars in the test. So they're only allowed one if they don't have a female driver in the second car. Oh. Mm. They can have two female female drivers, but um, they must have at least one to have both cars testing. Wow. So we've had a few female drivers in the past as well, um, Simona De Silvestro, and I can't think of the other names off the top of my head. Catherine Legg did a couple of races in season one, well, and she has been confirmed for the I-Pace e-trophy. All right, we're all tying it all together. Also, sorry, I just found it here, um, Italy's Michelle uh, Ceruti. Michelle Saruti, I would have butchered that name, and I apologise for that. Um, so we've had a few drivers in the past, but it would be it would be nice to see a, a full time confirmed um, starting female driver. 
yeah, so there's a few drivers that are kind of in the frame for that test. Catherine Legg, of course, um, Sophia Flourish, and a couple of others, I think. Um, Amna al Kwebasi as well. I'm probably butchering all these names, but hopefully uh, they don't listen to the podcast. And, um, well, if they do, hello at regionracingpodcast.com. And, um, you know, we can spell your name out to us and we'll get it right the next time. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So, current McLaren Formula One driver Stoffel Van Dorn is looking to uh, get a deal with HWA for Formula E Season 5. So, he's Belgian, 26 years of age. Ooh. And has recently lost his McLaren seat uh, to Lando Norris, but is understood to have been in discussions with HWA, which they are a racing arm of Mercedes. And should he join HWA, he would likely partner the DTM title contender, Gary Paffett. Um, this would be awesome. <laughs> I, I really like Stoffel Van Dorn. Have you seen much of him this season? I haven't seen much of him, um, but if his name is anything to go by, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, just like Maximilian Gunther. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully he gets the dragon seat. Um, anyway, well, or Mahindra, Mahindra as well. So HWA formally, formally announcing their lineup on October 8th? Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Mm. Um, hopefully they release the car then as well. Mitch Evans' brother will be racing in the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy next season. Wonderful news, Dean. Wonderful news. Simon Evans. Simon Evans. So we now have someone to cheer for in both series. Uh, and obviously we're not biased, but we think that um, it's a really good appointment. So Simon Evans, um, older brother of Mitch Evans, um, previously competed in New Zealand um, and crowned the V8 Super Tour champion in 2014-15. Um, third member of the family to race internationally. Um, the Evans boy's father um, ran the 24 Hours of Le Mans pre-qualifying uh, for Porsche back in 1996. And a uh, bit of trivia, he was denied a race start after an accident in New Zealand while attempting a land speed record. So That's pretty unlucky, I've got to say. <laughs> big racing history in the family. So I think they'll be able to push yeah. each other and yeah. um, it'll be good to have 10 different mm. races together um, and I guess they can, you know, never hurts to have family there I suppose. No um, and have we got a few other drivers confirmed for the E-Trophy yet? We do so there's um, Brazilian drivers, Kaká Bueno and Sergio Jimenez not sure what they do or um, much about them but um, yeah a couple of Brazilian drivers so they should be interesting um, apparently they are pretty decent from what I've read on Reddit. So I'm looking forward to, yeah, getting to know them a bit better and, and seeing what they can do. So debut for the um, I-Pace E-Trophy in Riyadh on December the 15th. Um, and so still a few more drivers to be uh, announced, but it sounds like they've got a lot of uh, a lot of interest and a lot of teams signing up for that. So um, we'll keep you updated. We sure will. It's going to be interesting. Mm. Now... I'm not happy by this piece of news that came out a couple of days ago. Luca Filippi has lost his Neo Drive. <laughs> oh, I was real gutted. I, well, all, all you listeners know that I'm quite a fan of Luca Filippi. Um, so I was gutted to hear of this, that he won't be with the team for season five after doing testing. Um, and I think he was pretty confident that he would be continuing on, but unfortunately that's not the case. So, Tom Dillman, who is another favourite of mine, is, well, pretty close as the favourite, um, pretty close to being signed, hopefully, to replace him. I'm real gutted, and I'm going to be following Luca Filippi in his next, um, next race series where he's driving. What about you, Nath? Yeah, it is a shame. So, it was Luca Filippi's first season in Formula E last season, and... Um... Just remind me, how did he um how did he end up doing? I don't really want to tell you now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He only got one one point. Yeah, so so not the best, but um yeah, it would have been nice to see him stay on and develop. Um but we wish him all the best wherever he continues driving. Yep, we absolutely do. 
And Tom Dillman, good appointment. I think there had to be one team that signed him, basically. Yeah, he, um, well, had he, yeah, he only raced three races in season four, but he did a very, uh, very respectable finish across those, so it's nice to see him staying in for season five. Yeah, for sure. I think he got a fourth place in one of those races after not being in the car all season. Yeah, yes, fourth place in uh, in New York for the first race there. That's great. Uh, so, Lewick, Duval, Oliver Rowland, and Nick DeVries have also been called upon for testing. Uh, so it could be either of those. Um, and of course, Oliver Turvey hasn't been announced yet. So, interesting times. Yes. So moving along to the next team down the list now, uh, Tachita have revealed their new car and um, their lineup. Yeah, I guess it was no surprise that Jean Dre would be continuing. Jean Eric Vern and Andre Loterer, which great drivers, both of them. And the car, not really a fan. It's, um, yeah, I suppose a lot of it comes down to how you feel about the DS version color scheme. Um, they've, you know, it's, it's their usual black and gold. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just the, the photos we've gotten, um, but it's, it almost looks like a slightly different body shape. It's a lot pointier at the front. Well, it can't be because it's the spec series on the, on the chassis, but, um, yeah. it does, I mean, you know, it's. I think it's the way that they've painted yeah. the, the gold on the top with the black on the side, so you kind of, you know, the, the, the black disappears and it looks like just a shadow. And um... I'm not a fan of the red on the front, but I think that might be from Total, which is the yes. um, one of their yeah. sponsors, potentially, pass. Mm. Um, can't say I'm a fan, unfortunately. They are keeping it pretty clean, though. Yeah, yep. It does have clean lines. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, I like the Jag. Um, so, guess the driver. Here's another one for you, Nath. So, guess the driver quiz. In this quiz, we test each other to see if we know a bit more about these drivers. Currently, they have to be one that is on the grid. And what we do is we ask three questions for five points, and then if they can't get it, they get an extra question for four points, an extra question for three points, and it goes down until they get nothing. So, five points, here we go. On the 16th of November 2010, he took part in a young driver's test in Abu Dhabi for Mercedes. He was born 9th of January 1987, mm -hmm. and he races an FIA World Endurance Championship LMGTE Pro Class for AF Corsa. Who is this driver? My initial guess would be Lucas Degrassi. That is incorrect. So for four points, he started his career in Formula E with Virgin Racing. Um, is it Sam Bird? It is Sam Bird. Oh, with Virgin from the start. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep, it is. 100% Sam Bird. The three-point question was his car number in Formula E is number two. I thought it a bit cruel to put that second. Because um, <laughs> even I wouldn't have got that. Um, yeah. Yep. For two points, he is British. So that narrows the field down quite considerably. And for one point, his last name is something that can fly. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you've made those progressively easier and easier. Let's say. Yeah, well... Yeah, you can't have five absolutely or six just dead hard questions. That would be a bit rough for you. No, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, well, I will um, I'll have to dig out some questions for you next week and see how we go. I'm looking forward to it already. So I guess that's the end of the show. But following on from what I was talking about regarding guests at the start of the show, we have Sophie Barker coming on next week. I know this podcast is every second week but i'm gonna gonna do that with her uh later this week and post it next week hopefully so we'll get that out we're going to talk about um journalism and um a bit of pr stuff and you know her favorite drivers hopefully it's mitch evans um tracks and also car liveries i'm going to talk about um women in motorsport and we're going to also talk about 
I guess what what her goals are moving forward and and what she thinks about Formula E and can it catch Formula One in speed and technology. So for those of us who aren't in the know, um, can you just give us a bit of background on Sophie Barker? Yep. So she does a bit of scribbling for Formula E Zone, um, and she has a blog. So, yep, she does a lot in the Clio Cup. Um, but not so much in Formula E and Formula One, but there's lots of content on there as well. So, Excellent. Looking forward to that. So stay tuned for that interview. Uh, that should be middle of next week. Wonderful. So thank you for listening to us once again. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Region Racing Podcast. And please, um, if you've got any, any feedback or questions or just want to say hi, and we'd love to hear from you. And so... Flick us an email at hello at regionracingpodcast.com. It would be awesome if you could give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser, Breaker, wherever there is the ability to give us a review. It could even be a one-star review, but maybe send, a, send an email to us if you're going to put a one-star review. We'd like to know what we're doing completely wrong um, before that one goes out. We also love our blue bottle coffee. Click the link for some money off your first order. Um, if you use these great services, you're also helping the podcast whilst getting all of your coffee needs. We know you won't be disappointed. I actually had some coffee uh, this week, so I had some blue bottle coffee. It was incredibly fresh and probably some of the best coffee I have ever tasted, although it's hard to beat some of your coffees when I go head over to your place, but incredible. So get on it. And they ship internationally too, don't they? They do. Wonderful. So they're based in Oakland, California. Yep. Sunny downtown Oakland, California. For you 99% invisible uh, fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that brings big memories. <laughs> in beautiful downtown Oakland, California. Yes. So um, I'm surprised that they haven't got on the sponsorship. But anyway, we're now rambling. So thank you all for listening. We will see you again in a couple weeks. Are you saying bye or not? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, see you later. <laughs>